Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Thanks for being with us on this beautiful day in Chicago. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. We've got uh, Lawrence spinning the dials Yo. for us. We're going to talk to Pete Blackburn coming up at 3 o'clock today. Pete from the What Chaos Show. You can do some around the league with him. Uh, but we're going to start as we usually do today. Caleb Williams and Justin Fields? With Caleb Williams and Justin <laughs> Fields. What should the Bears do, Chicago? Yeah. Here's oh, five God. hours on it. Oh, goodness. It's a nightmare. No, we promise you we're not going to do that. We are going to uh, start the show talking about the Hawks and uh, specifically last night's game. We know we had the postgame show, but in the, what, 12 hours or so, 14 hours or so since we've gotten home, it has become... Last night's per- Bedard performance has become like the headline for every hockey news aggregator in yep. the damn country. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, everywhere. Hey, the kids, uh, the kids special. Get kids must see TV. To yeah, <laughs> gonna be gonna be a long uh, fifteen years of that for the for the weird people that you meant you talked about a little bit last night on the post game show uh, before I joined. You know. It's always cool to hate whatever's popular. Of course. Yep. So for the Conor Bedard haters, the weirdos out there, <laughs> it's going to be a really long decade and a half for you guys. <laughs> yes. You guys are going to get made to look like the assholes you are again and again and again and again, and I'm going to enjoy every second of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And look, I, you don't have to like the team, but there's you can at least 31 teams the in the league that are pissed they don't have Conor McDavid, right? Like, yeah. But don't take it out on him. Yeah, I don't necessarily <laughs> like the Edmonton Oilers, but I love watching Connor McDavid play. I hate the Pittsburgh Penguins, but watching Sidney Crosby in his prime was appointment Special. television. Yeah. Same with Alex Ovechkin. Will never call myself a Caps fan, except for when they played Vegas in the final. But, dude, when he's on TV in his prime, you watch. So you don't yeah. have to become Blackhawk fans, but don't be out there saying, oh, he's overrated, he's overhyped. You're just wrong. You're also depriving yourself of enjoying a sport well, that you claim to People that miserable love. Yeah. don't deserve anything nice anyway. <laughs> be miserable. Just shut Fair up. enough. Be miserable and stay out of my mentions. Yeah. But the fun stuff, too, with uh, another uh, moment of banter with uh, Felino and Bedard on the bench, and Felino will be with us. Tomorrow at 2.30, so don't miss that. He'll be right over there on the couch that is not there yet. But he'll be here with us. Um, it's a chair. Just talking to Connor and saying, man, I've got so much to teach you. <laughs> I, and I don't have enough time on my contract to get it done. And uh, I just love watching that relationship. And last night, Felino sort of talked about how, like, Bedard and Kurish ever really hitting it off, like, on a personal level. Yeah. And he's just kind of, like, the accommodating father that's there if they need <laughs> anything, right? Like... Yeah. Dad, can you get the Cheerios down from the top shelf? Like, okay, yeah, I got it for you. <laughs> Let me do the dirty work, and then you guys can clean up on that. Yeah, so. I mean, it's it has been one of the uh, bright spots of of this season has been Nick Foligno being on this team uh, and and being able to fill that role as like the leader, team dad, like kind of corralling all the kids together. And, and yeah, I mean. People were, I saw people online being like, like, oh, what is Nick Felino going to teach Connor Bedard? You know, doesn't Bedard's already three times as talented as he is or whatever. And it's just like, it's not Nick Felino saying, here, Connor, this is how you shoot a puck, like as a professional. Right. No, that he doesn't need any pointers with that. It's about, you know, life in the NHL, life as a professional, what it, what it means to, you know, take care of your body and and take care of your you know take care of all your business off the ice so that you can be the best version of yourself on the ice and everything and and he's been playing that role uh so well for Bedard and the rest of the young group this season and he did it so well and he plays well on the ice that he was you know given a two-year contract extension and he's going to stick around and be in that role uh as the next 
group of young guys gets into the team and then the next group after that, the season after that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that, that Felino is, is in that role. Um, and, and yeah, I, I would, I would say that they're, you know, you see it on the ice, how good these guys are. Um, but I would say off the ice too, like there's a lot that goes into having a guy like Felino and a guy like Seth Jones and, um, you know, having those kinds of guys there in that locker room to kind of guide this next group, um, not just on the ice, but, you know, off it, locker room, all that stuff. Well, there's still plenty of stuff for Connor Bedard to learn. Like, yeah, Nick Foligno's not going to go out there and right. give him pointers on a slap shot. Actually, shoot this way. Yeah, no, yeah. but there are <laughs> things he's learning, and he's showing that he's learning. Both Nick Foligno and Luke Richardson after the game last night talked about how he's improving defensively and learning that he can t- take defense and quickly turn it into offense. And he's learning how to, when to pass, when to shoot, when to do this, when to do that. And those are the things, you know, that play and that, that goal at the end of the second period, yep. that was an example of it. And you, you almost predicted that goal next to me in the press box saying, Man, the Ducks are being real sloppy here. And yep. then, like, five seconds later, the puck's turned over. It's in the back of the net. And, by the way, I gave Felino credit for that play during the postgame. Watch it again. Bedard forced that turnover. Mm-hmm. Then it went to Felino, who got it back to Bedard, who got it over the courage. Yeah. And as Felino has said, how many times has that happened to the Hawks at the end of a period? Yep. Now right. they're flipping the script. Those are the things he's talking about when he's got, I've got so many things to teach you, like, Bedard's just scratching the surface. And something that I don't know if you guys talked about it on the post game show before or after I was on, but we're seeing with Kershev how Bedard is going to elevate players in his career. And that's what yeah. the great ones do. Everybody who yeah. plays with the great ones gets better. And if not, they're gone. Like they're not on that line anymore. And Kershev has gone in two years from being a borderline NHL player to maybe a long term piece to like the second best player on the team yeah, right, because yeah. he's playing with Bedard. And also I might do a, uh, I've, I've got an idea for a, a story uh, for all CHGO come, you know, maybe in the next few days or at the beginning of the off season, Philip Kershev's development is what is more normal than not. So keep mm-hmm. Kershev's development in mind when all these young guys start coming yeah. they're not all going to be immediate nhl stars they're right. not all going to be immediate effective nhl players kershev played a couple years in rockford he spent a year going back and forth he spent a season not knowing you know second line one game fourth line next yeah. game scratch the next game it took him three nhl seasons to finally cement his place mm-hmm. that's more the norm right for young players than what we see with Connor Bedard or what we've seen with Alex Vlasic, who's, whose descent in the NHL has been pretty rapid, mm-hmm. a lot faster than any of us thought. I mean, he's becoming the player a lot of us thought he would, but nobody thought it was going to be this quick. Yeah. yeah, like right now, like to steal a meme, it's like 10 out of 10, no notes for Alex Vlasic. <laughs> you know, usually with a young defenseman, even when they're performing, like Korczynski's a good example. Mm-hmm. Overall, we're pretty happy with his performance. When you look at it on the whole, but we can go back and pick out a dozen, dozen and a half moments of like, eh, this yeah. is stuff he has to learn from. With Vlasic, it's been so seamless. And a big part of that has been because he's been given the time to develop. And fortunate for him, there was not a huge spotlight on him right out of the draft. They have that with Reichel because he was a higher first round pick. Yeah. It's there with Korchinski. It's going to be there with Nazar. I think it'll be there with Moore a little bit. But like Kurashev and Vlasic, those guys didn't have those immediate expectations so they were able to kind of like learn on the fly without having to worry about hearing it from fans that this guy's a bust or whatever it might be chef was a fourth round pick right yeah yeah well and vlasic was three years in college and then uh basically a full season in rockford before before this season so i mean he 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 took a a longer path as well and and yeah i think it's it's a pretty good uh blueprint for what you're expectations should be for most of the prospects that they have um, already in the system and, and guys that they're still going to pick. I mean, yeah, they're the, the Blackhawks first round pick this year, the one that they own is going to be fourth or better at the very least. Right. So that's a player that it might be directly to the NHL or one more year of 
development before they make the jump to pro or whatever. Like that player will likely be on that kind of fast track, but every everybody else is going to be still down the road, which is fine. That's why when you look at the extensions of Dickinson and Felino and Morazic, they're two year extensions, you know, into the 2026 season, because these guys that are coming along should be, most of them should be ready. Uh, the, the top prominent guys should be ready by that 26, 27 season to be, you know, close to the NHL lineup. You maybe finagle a trade or two, sign, sign a, a marquee free agent or two. And then behind that, you have two first round picks this year, uh, three second round picks this year, two first round picks next year. Like you have all of those picks coming behind them. That'll be like, Oh, their arrivals will be like 2029. Like it's, it's a way to keep a competitive window open by having that like right. cycle of, of prospects coming through um, and not just not being jammed up and being like, okay, this year, here's five new guys. Next year, here's five new guys. Like everyone will take some time. Yep. And that's, you know, we see the timeline, as you mentioned, with those three contract extensions during the season. That's why Kyle Davidson doesn't want to give anybody – long-term deal this summer mm -hmm. anybody he signs is probably going to be in line with those Felino and Dickinson deals two years maybe a third year depending yeah. on who the player is right because he doesn't want to fill in these long-term commitments until he knows exactly what he needs yeah as these young the young crop starts coming in and he knows okay this guy is exactly what we thought he was going to be but this guy uh, maybe he's not going to be so we need that's where you you feel like the free agency mark market ideally should be used to fill your 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 holes, your patch up your team. Right. It it shouldn't be. That's how you build your team. Yeah, now some right, teams right. try to do that. Um, and we're going to talk very often. We're going to talk about the Detroit Red Wings. They were a team <laughs> that the eyes are playing. The eyes are playing. Look at all these great prospects. And then the last two years, they've gone out and brought in all these veterans. And now, right now, they're out of a playoff spot and they're fighting each other in practice. Yeah. So you know it's going well. Yeah. It's going perfectly in my mind. <laughs> Screw those guys. <laughs> but, like, the free agency is where you're supposed to get that last piece. Yeah. Your Marion Hosas, you know, your, your Brian Campbells. Those were the guys that put you over the top. Those weren't the guys that you built the team around. They were, right. like, that last piece where you're like, well, I can't get a Marion Hosa in the draft because those are once-in-a-lifetime type players. And if I did, I got to wait a while. So I'll just go get Marion Hosa. Right. right. So that's that's the plan. And we just you know, we see it a lot, especially after this last trade deadline when no you know Kyle Davidson didn't trade the entire roster. You know, you gotta let the plan follow all the way through. Yeah. Uh, we should take our first break. We got more to come on the other side of this. We got to remind you, by the way, to smash that like button for us. We are uh, insultingly low on likes right now. Uh, so please hit that like button. Yeah, y'all did us. a great job last night in the post game, I'll say that. Yeah. Up. Absolutely yes. great on the post game. Thank you so much. Over for that. 100 watching, 27 likes. That's that's yeah. bad math. Oh, yeah, guys. we got to get in the habit of uh, smashing that <laughs> smashing that like button as soon as you jump in the room. We would appreciate that. Um, first though, Mario's going to tell you about Circa. Yeah, Circa. Hey, you want to you want to make a good bet? Do it with Circa Sports, Circa Sportsbook rather, uh, and they're one of the best around, if not the best sports book around uh, what sets them apart are their tight money line splits and low hold models. Uh, for example, games on Circus Sportsbook will strive to be at a minus 110 split uh, on their menu when other sports books might have the same game at minus 115 or minus 120. Circus Sports keeps as little money as possible on large market bets, especially compared to those other books. And uh, compared to those other books, Circo lets you win as much as possible. Do they, they do not limit winner, uh, players based on how much they win. Circus Sports will encourage you to take as much money as you can from them. And they also encourage you to download and explore all the different sportsbook apps out there to make sure that you are going to be getting the best lines from Circa. You're going to be doing that anyways. So, you know, why even waste your time? And the best thing about Circa is that there are real people behind their customer service, uh, and they try to resolve issues in a timely fashion, unlike other sports books who use chatbots. Boo. Boo. 
Screw them. All aspects of the app are run by the same team that runs the main Circa Sportsbook at Circa Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. So download the Circa Sports Illinois app at circasports.com slash Illinois app and sign up today. Also be on the lookout for Circa events, watch parties, and tailgates. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-426-2537 or text GAMB. G-A-M-B to 833-234 or visit areyoureallywinning.com. And when you are winning, like the Blackhawks have been winning recently, yeah. uh, you want to kick back and celebrate with an icy cold Coors Light. There it is. Beautiful. Mm. The go-to beer when you're trying to find your chill, whether you're stressed out from your job, or your kids are driving you nuts or the dog won't shut up, or, you know what, it's been a good day. Yeah. Right? Hawks win. Whatever, it's Friday, whatever, it's 80 degrees out in the middle of March, crack one open, it's worth it. chill out. It's why Coors Light helps you find the moments to chill all year long. It is the perfect cold refreshment to chill you out, especially during a stressful and high-action Hawks game. That's when typically we crack them open it's during the game and after. It's, it really brings you to where you need to be when you are, uh, when you are stressed out, you know, in a good way or a bad way. When it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer we reach for. It's cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged for a smoother finish. When it's time to chill, open yourself a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And Greg, just to sort of, uh, you started a point, I think I derailed you a little bit about Bedard elevating the guys he's playing with and, and you specifically as it pertains to Philip Kurashev. That's a guy who coming into this year is kind of like, all right, we're going to bet on you a little bit. You haven't shown that you really deserve a huge contract. So we're going to, we're going to give you kind of one of these middling contracts and, and see what you can do. And it's a bet that paid off. Like he's, he's been really, really good. And I don't want to, while Bedard certainly has helped, I don't want to sell Kurashev short. It's not like he's just going to the front of the net and Bedard's banking pucks off his ass. Yeah, right. He is contributing in a big way and showing that he can be a 200-foot player and a top-six player, even on a good team. Yeah, he's, his, his play without the puck has been really good. His speed helps. He's one of the few guys that could keep up with Bedard. He's really found his knack in... in being able to get open on the ice. When you're on the ice with Colin Bedard, you're going to get your space because mm-hmm. people are not going to be focused on you, and he's used that to his advantage. And, you know, you guys played the, the Conor Bedard uh, post game last night. When he was asked about Kershev, Bedard's eyes, like, lit up. Like, he was yeah. like, man, I love playing with that yeah, guy. Yeah. Like, they're not getting split up anytime soon. No, no reason <laughs> like, to. He just... You could tell that there's something special. And Kershev, you know, he was asked about it too. You know, Kershev does it. Actually, he was asked about the – somebody tried to get super smart with their answer, their question and asked. he was asked about the symbiosis. The symbiosis yes, I heard, the heard that last night. Um, I loved the blank stare that he Kershev just kinda looked at him <laughs> responded like, with. What the f- like, I speak five languages, and that ain't a word in any of them, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah, you're going to need to try Somebody to was like, chemistry. Try so, a similar, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, try an easier word. Yeah, um, but yeah, Bedard loves playing with him, and there's good reason for him, too. Like, it's not, it's not a Zach Hyman situation. I'm not ripping on Zach Hyman. He's been very good, but Zach Hyman's like, get to the front of the net and let, uh, and let, um, you know, Connor McDavid's shot hit off of you or get the rebound. He did the same thing in Toronto with, with Marner and uh, Matthews. Kershev's out there making plays. Yep. Kershev's finding Bedard for the one-timers. Bedard's finding him for the one-timers. And, no, it wasn't Lazarus who used the 10-cent word this time, no. Um, <laughs> I forget who it was. It was Tim Cronin. Yes, that's it who was it Tim was. Cronin, yeah. Yeah. From uh, AP. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, – I, I think we we talked about it on last night's show. Like I, I think those two for the foreseeable future, uh, until you know proven wrong, like they're they're going to be tied together in in the lineup. Like we thought, uh, Bedard and Taylor Hall were going to be tied together. I think Bedard and Kurashev have uh, really found found that chemistry. And yeah, I mean, I, I w- a symbiosis. 
Symbiosis. <laughs> yes. Symbiosis. Yes. There's Symbi. It's my favorite. That's my favorite Tool album. Symbiosis. Yeah. <laughs> good album. Yeah. Um, see, yeah I think they yeah. they they work well together. Uh, it's a good point. Uh, there was just a comment up there. You go back to when you just had up there, Law. Uh, yeah, Bedard, Kurashev, and Felino are cooking right now from Earthbound uh, MV. I wonder if at some point Athens U gets a look on that top line with Bedard and Kurashev. I know you've got a lot of chemistry going with Felino and Bedard and Kurashev, but I'm I'm really interested to see what a line with that much skill in it would look like. I would do it as an in-game adjustment, but I think we've seen it multiple times this season with that trio Dard, Kurashev, and Felino put together, um, working together and then being broken up and then coming back together and it working. It's just like there's too many exa- there's too many times where it has it has worked to split it up again for right. for a longer period of time. I think if you want to throw the thing to see you on there, uh, on that top line with them for a period or half a period or a couple shifts, whatever, um, to see if you know if there's something there, fine. Like I'm that's I'm fine with that. Um, but yeah, I would, I would like to see Felino and Bedard and Kirsch have just, let, let's just let that be the group for the last 15 games. Yeah. I wouldn't mess with that, but I think ideally they would like Athena to see you. If he starts producing it, two assists, his first game back look really good. Mm-hmm. Get some balance in the lineup. Don't put your three best players on this. You need a second line yeah. out there to have, you know, uh, teams worry about. You need to have, you just... You know, you need to have their second pair of defensemen kind of worried about somebody else, too. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it would be fun to see those three, the three fastest guys. Uh, but I don't think we have to wait too long to see lines like that because those are the type of guys, when you look at Nazar, when you look at Moore, yeah. you look at uh, Kantaroff in, in Russia, those are Kyle Davidson. Kyle Davidson wants four lines like yeah. that where they just right, yeah. skate you out of the rink all night long. Yeah. So it's coming. We won't have to wait too long. Uh, well, I mean, even if they were to, you know, you could switch Athens CU and Blackwell. Yeah, Blackwell last night was with Dickinson and Anderson. I, I mean, I don't even mind. I think for the first time last night, like, Taylor Radish looked like he had a pulse because he was playing with Tyler Johnson and Andreas Athens CU. Right. Yeah. You know, picked up an assist. He was noticeable in the game. Mm-hmm. Set up Athens CU for a nice scoring chance. Like, that was the first time in a while that Taylor Radish has been really visible. And I would save Anthony to see you for if and when Lucas Reichel comes back up. You put Anthony to see you and Reichel back together. Yeah. They worked so well. At the they end did of work well season. together. So that you put him, Maybe. Anthony to see you, Dickinson, and Reichel? Sure. I'm down with that. Or even Tyler Johnson, Anthony to see you, and Reichel. Yeah. yeah. Work. Any right. combination like that w- would work well for me, I think. Um, and that, that definitely creates more room on the ice for Reichel to go out and, and do his thing. If you're worried about. Athens CU's, you know, vertical speed straight up the ice. Reichel can kind of fill in yeah. behind and, and make some more plays and get some better looks at the Yeah, because Athens CU is, uh, he is a speedster who is willing to go into a corner behind the net, will mm-hmm. win a puck, and look no further than Mackenzie Entwistle's goal last night, where he just used his speed to pressure uh, an Anaheim player, took the puck away, and got it to Entwistle, who made a great play on his own. Yep. But without that effort and without that defensive pressure from Athens CU, it doesn't it never happens. So and I wonder, you know, thinking about this, like, are they just gonna stick Reichel down in Rockford for the rest of the year? Um, it's been almost what like is it been ten games been, yet? Uh, six I'd or seven. Be surprised if he doesn't get at least another few games up here. But I guess it depends on if they they're consistently seeing what they want to see from him. Yeah. No, he didn't get any points last night. No I shots either last shot night. Last yeah. night. So, you know, I don't know. I didn't see the game. Obviously, we were, we were at the United that, Center. Yeah. They're playing tonight again in Texas. Big game for them. If they win tonight, they leap over Texas for third place, which is key because then you, don't, you avoid that playing series. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I, I, you know, that's something we could ask Luke about tomorrow after practice. You know, what's the latest on Reichel? You know, what's been, what are you hearing? 13 games. It's been there for 13? a while. Wow. It's been almost a month. February 13th versus Man. Vancouver was his last game. Yeah, it's been a month. Yeah. So they're obviously in no oh, hurry, I which I, I don't, you know, I don't have an issue with. Well, and the the reviews from Davidson and, and Richardson when they've been asked about him have been positive. They've liked what they've seen. They just want to see more of it happen. So, yeah, I mean, if he's if he's down there the rest of the season, like – 
probably will suck for him a little bit because I think he'd like to get back to the NHL and that would be a sign that like what he's doing and what he's done um, has been what they've asked and has been working. Um, but if he doesn't, uh, if, if he stays down there the whole time, like that's okay too because that allows him to continue to, to push with the guys that are there. They're in a playoff push um, trying to, to you know get into that third spot. Like you said, like avoid that little play-in round. Like even though they'd host it, like you still want to avoid yeah. playing on un- playing unnecessary postseason games if you don't have to. Um, the way the AHL has it set up, so yeah, I mean, it's if he's producing and, and helping uh, them down there, like that's that's still good for his confidence. The, the, I think the worst thing that could happen is if he builds himself back up to the NHL and it's the same old stuff, and that's just like, oh shoot, like now what, you know? Yeah. I mean, and the Ice Logs have a pretty darn good team. Yeah. They got David Gust, and they got Mike Hardman back over the last couple games. Rem Pitlick. Rem Pitlick. 12, 12 has points been, in 10 games. He's been he's a great AHL player. Yeah. He's a huge addition for them. Um, you know, Sini's helping. They got Luke, Luke Philp is, is going to come back. He's coming back. <laughs> Zach Sanford uh, is on his uh, way. Anders Bjork is going to be back in another week or two. His timeline was three to four weeks. He's been out almost, I think, three weeks, so he should be back in another week or two. That's a really solid AHL. Yeah, Yeah. that's a solid AHL. If they get the goaltending and the goaltending's been improved, both Comesso and Stauber, that's a team that can make a long run in the AHL playoffs. They've got the right mix of good young talent and those AHL veteran guys. So. Hey, if Reichel plays till May or early June with the Ice Hogs, that's all right. Yeah, by the way, six assists in eight games for Reichel. No goals so far no with goals. the Ice Hogs. All right, no Pete goals. Blackburn from the What Chaos podcast is standing by. But first, Greg's going to tell you how to get your mouth stuffed with delicious bacon. Yes, you call our guy, Charlie, the bacon guy, who is based out of Woodridge, Illinois, and makes craft bacon and bacon jams in over 30 Five different flavors, naturally cured, preservative-free products. There aren't any ingredients that Charlie can't pronounce himself involved in the process, unlike most of that crappy store-bought bacon that's out there. Yeah, um, he's, he gives examples of, like, these weird... I'm not even going to read those because, uh, yeah, I can't pronounce them either. Vacuum sealed and freezes perfectly. Bacon lasts in the package up to 60 days in the fridge, one week after the seal is broken, and nine months in the freezer. But trust me, Charlie's bacon is going to last mere minutes in your house. It's that good. You get it, you take it out of the package, you throw it in the oven, you eat it. End of story. Bacon jam lasts about 90 days in the fridge and up to one year in the freezer. But if you're keeping bacon in the freezer that long, you're doing it wrong. Bacon jam goes perfectly on anything. Put it on scrambled eggs, toast, crackers, burgers, grilled cheese, Cinnamon rolls, pizza, or Charlie's favorite, the spoon. I've used it in grilled cheese on top of burgers the other night. Baked potato. stuff, yes. Anything you put bacon jam on, it's going to immediately make it better. You can go to Charlie's website, check out the bacon vault, all the flavors he's made in the past if it's not currently available. Give Charlie about two weeks, and he'll make it for you. Now he's got some awesome merch, beanies, hats, T-shirts, stickers, and even coffee mugs, some of the great flavors you have in the bacon include maple pepper chorizo french toast honey chipotle cajun jardinera raspberry chipotle and the maui waui bacon jam flavors include original bourbon mango habanero and cherry jalapeno starting now you can save 10 percent on your order at charliethebaconguy.com when you use the code c h g o at checkout you can pick it up which is the most efficient way or he can deliver it to you meet you halfway or even ship it he'll put the bacon in the mail he makes the bacon so you can bring it home get yourself some bacon no and while you're at it opening up the mailbox and there's a nice package of bacon there. yes yes it smells that's good why, in there for months why all the neighborhood dogs are <laughs> hanging out by my mailbox <laughs> so often and uh when you're getting your bacon make sure you become a chgo Die hard as well. Why? Oh, well, there's lots of reasons why. First off, you get a free shirt or hat upon sign up. You can pick from our awesome new Chicago collection. Any of the stuff from our uh, shows. We got our show logos on stuff. I'm wearing a CHGO Cubs shirt right now. Uh, Greg's got our new Raised in Chicago number seven design. There's always new stuff coming out uh, at CHGO Locker. If you're a die hard, you'll save 20% on all of them. You get access to all of our great premium written content, like the Rebuild Report coming tomorrow and the, my uh, Blackhawks Beat that comes on Friday, along with Adam Hogue's newsletter, Cubs and Sox newsletters, 
tons and tons and tons Goat of diehard only access. from our own uh, Will Gottlieb. Yeah. Yeah. That Goat 101. Launched. Yes, that's a new, brand new one we got there, too. And uh, access to our Discord, where we gave away a commemorative Corey Crawford puck this week. Yeah. Uh, I know Michael Evans won that, and uh, he said, hey, it didn't come with my CHGO t-shirt. That's because I'm shipping it from my basement, not the CHGO uh, <laughs> World Headquarters t-shirt in factory. Prague. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, become a diehard. We've got uh, opening day events happening, ballpark pub for the White Sox, and the country club for the Cubs. Head over to allchgo.com for all the details. And anything that requires a ticket, if you're a diehard, you save 20% including all of our United Center takeovers. We've done two this so far this year, one more coming on the 26th that is sold out. It's awesome time, totally worth it, keeps us going. You get a free sugar hat, it's a no-brainer. Become a diehard today. All right, with that, we're going to go out to our guest line and bring in our buddy from the What Chaos podcast. It is Pete Blackburn. What's up, Pete? A little tidier, a little tidier, Sean. (laughs) <laughs> Hello, fellas. So we're just fixing this. Zoom camera. out. <laughs> Walls are closing. Come on, in. Sean. <laughs> I mean, it's like there a Hitchcock go. movie. He's got. He's got to get that hat in the shot. <laughs> I think Sean is still hung over from the twenty-four hour pod. Uh, still got to get on sleep. <laughs> DJ could... off screen just dropped an f bomb directed at Law. We also <laughs> nice. have an elderly woman who's spying on us right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? Hello. Sorry, this is a mess. Right. You know, you know, let's let's quit with the grab aspect there, all right? It, yeah. It only serious. took uh, back-to-back seven goal games and a five-point Connor Bedard night for Pete to bust out the Blackhawks hat, but we're <laughs> we're glad to see it. Oh, no, buddy. I've been wearing this Blackhawks hat. I've got so much Blackhawks merch from, like, my every two-week trips out there <laughs> that uh, I, I have more Blackhawks stuff than Bruins stuff at this point. Wow. See, I, this is what that's, that's I've, I've, I've been wondering know. about this. Like, when you come to town, are, are Jamie Faulkner and Danny Wirtz, like, showering you with gifts? We saw you had your own skybox the other night. Mm-hmm. Like, well, how is that working out? Uh, I, I, we're friends with a couple people within the Blackhawks organization, and they nice. treat us very, very well. So every time we go out there, uh, we are, we're hooked up. Nice. I mean, next time you're here, you're going to hook us up with, you know, if you're just got a skybox to yourself, like we could eat hot dogs too. We can. I bet you can, but I like eating hot dogs by myself is the thing. I agree. Same. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I totally agree. No you, pants, you, you all the hot dogs for me. It's good stuff. No, that's you not and, true. I, I have invited people from CHGO uh, out no. to Blackhawks no. games, and no, I, uh, we've us. gone out a few times. So. Nice. That well, well, sounds fun. at the game. Uh, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do want to compliment you. Uh, all sincerity and joking aside, the 24-hour broadcast. Amazing. It was so great. And I just, honestly, you guys were my companion throughout the day. Usually the trade deadline is just like constantly refreshing Twitter. I knew I had you guys on in the background. You're playing Bob it. You're talking about whatever. But I knew that if news broke, I was going to get it from you guys. It was great. You guys did a fantastic job. Uh, at what point did you start losing your mind, I wonder? Uh, I think the toughest stretch, thank you, by the way, that's very nice. Uh, the toughest stretch was probably like the four to nine range, just because the, not that the chat was like dead. It was was just like not a lot happening. We were like kind of just waiting for people to wake up and for the trade rumors to kind of start picking back up so that we could feast on that. Unfortunately, when like nine, nine AM rolled around, we still got nothing until like 11.30 a.m. Yeah. in terms of trade news. So uh, it was it was a lot easier than I thought. So like that stretch, it was probably the most difficult, but it still wasn't that hard. We were goofing around, reading uh, the Rangers, uh, asking for the assassination of Tom Wilson, as DJ put it. <laughs> so uh, it was we did a lot of uh, weird stuff, but it was fun. And well, since DJ's in an earshot, we're just all concerned. How was his injury? Is he uh, back to full strength or what? What did you do? He cut his penis. He didn't injure himself, I don't think. I reckon they're talking about the old uh, leprechaun. Oh, your penis? Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was yeah. an old story. That was forever ago. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. it takes I've, time. I've, I've healed and re-injured that thing a hundred <laughs> times since. <laughs> Congrats. All right, good. I was concerned. I was worried about it. It's not a place that you want to... Not a place that you want to mess around. So no, no. Well, we care. We wanted to. Check I don't know in. if we're allowed to cross stream our sponsors, but uh, we have a sponsor that allows us to take care of our our genitals, if you will. Yeah. We nice. Had a sponsor once. Once I did the read, and they never came back. So I must have <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> well, the, you're, you're, the problem is that you didn't you didn't remix a Papa Roach song no, to no. accompany your reads because 
<laughs> our cut my penis uh, drops with those reads have been incredible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it I helps. love it. It was great. All right, let's let's get serious here. Um, we I start now. We have serious. you on to do around the league stuff because you guys have your pulse on the league, unlike any others. And uh, we've been keeping a close eye on the Red Wings ever since the uh, Chris Chelios retirement night and the Patrick Kane overtime winner. And I got to tell you, most people uh, watching and sitting in these chairs are pretty delighted with how things are going in Detroit. Are we on? Uh, are they frauds? What do we think? Yeah, we uh, we got in, in depth in, on that discussion this morning. The Red Wings are frauds. Uh, they are a team that falls apart uh, without Dylan Larkin. They they need Dylan Larkin. They're very thin down the middle. It's uh, it's tough. I, I, the, the the numbers recently. Let's see. They've been they've been outscored uh, five to nineteen at five on five over their last four games without Dylan Larkin. Not good. So uh, I also think. The jersey patch that they introduced mess with the juju because the Red Wings are very protective of their brand, as they should be. It's one of the best jerseys in the hockey. As soon as they threw a jersey patch on there, uh, everything went to shit. They're zero and six, I believe, with the with the jersey patch or winless since their last. I think six, they should put more patches it. on. Sure, <laughs> all put the them, patches. Put them all over the place. Well, there was a fight in pride to say Ben Sherrod and Lucas Raymond got into it. Uh, it's never a good sign, and uh, you know we we kind of. Not to tie it all back to the Hawks, but we were sort of talking about how what Detroit has done, ha, they've been kind of piecemealing this thing, is they've got their Larkins and their Raymonds and their Siders and those good young players. And that's it. But they've been bringing in Kane and DeBrinkett and Olimata and, and guys like and JT Braun. Comfer <laughs> and J- David Prawn. Like, Andrew Kopp. What's the right way to, to get back? And it feels like to me, just top of my head, the teams that try to load up and build most of their team via free agency and trades typically don't succeed. You sort of have the same impression? Yeah, I, I. By the way, I, the the fight in practice, I think it could have been galvanizing, but it was not a uh, it was not a good fight. They, there was no real punches thrown. I think if you're gonna fight in practice, you may as well get it all out there and have it be a real, a real like holy crap moment. That was a, a aggressive hugging at practice. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna do the job turning that that ship around. But yeah, you can't build a winner through free agency. Uh, it's just it's not how the league works and it's just not the right strategy i don't think that the i don't think the red wings are typically i don't think they're trying to do that they're trying to add some nice pieces through free agency for the most part like i i wouldn't say that they're trying to be like super aggressive steve eiserman has always preached patience and keeping an eye on a longer term vision so like I, I don't have a problem with what the wings are doing in terms of philosophy. It's just going to, I think they're still a bit of ways away. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he just started the, the free agency buying a little early, maybe a year or two earlier than he wanted to. Maybe he was feeling a little pressure and said, all right, fine. I'll go out and get Alex to bring it. All right, fine. I'll do it. Patrick Kane. Um, you know, even the even last summer, he went, he was pretty active getting in some veteran guys. You always need some veteran guys, but I think maybe there wasn't enough of the prospects coming up, and it forced his hand to go out and get more free agents. Well, I think it's kind of a balance. You mentioned that they brought in like veteran guys, and with the like, they have been pretty good about drafting young players, getting those core pieces in there. And I mean, I think you'll probably start seeing it in Chicago soon. Like you, you sign. You sign some veteran guys to teach winning habits and to put together a respectable roster for the young players so that they don't just lose all the time, all the time, all the time. And like I, when I look at Detroit, I think they're not there yet, but they're probably they're probably learning some things from this season from that from some of the older guys and like from actually being a respectable team for a good portion of the year. They'll realize where maybe they're they're their weak points are and where they can improve in terms of habits and in terms of their system and and shape around that for next season. Detroit sucks. Detroit <laughs> sucks. In, in fairness Jeremy to the Red Wings too, and I, I hate to do this, but they have had zero draft lottery luck. They've not been able to get even when they were historically awful. Wah. 
you know, years ago, I'm they really, never got that number one pick. Okay, I, Craig, what's the highest okay, they got? Craig I'm really, really sad about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> you know, for the Hawks kind of lucked into Bedard. Hey, sorry the league doesn't want to rip the draft for them like they do the Blackhawks. That's just too bad. Speaking of the lottery, what's the temperature over there in Chicago about this this wagon of a Blackhawks team that can't stop scoring seven goals apiece? Uh, might be playing yourself out of Macklin Celebrini over there. They thought that last year in third place got us counter Bedard, so why not do that again? Uh, I don't think the go ultimate goal at the start of this year was, hey, we have to get Macklin Celebrini. They wanted a top five pick, and they're going to get it. They, may, they still may get number one. But as the year has gone on and you had that just disgusting run of injury luck that made you go out and basically find, you know, hey, do you have your own stick? Can you be here tomorrow? All right, cool, you're playing. That all of a sudden got him in the run, but I don't think people are going to be too upset if they don't finish with the worst record as long as Connor Bedard is doing what he's doing because that's what matters. His development this season matters more than picking one, two, or three. Uh, I mean, picking one would certainly help, but I oh, yeah, do well, agree yeah, with well, you. Yeah, nothing like, against it. it. Certainly would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, wasn't, like it wasn't number one or bust this year like it was last year. Last yeah, year was yeah. all about Connor Bedard. This year it was like, hey, that'd be cool if we get number one, but a lot of people have been like, well, who could we get at two or three? And they've been focusing on some of the other prospects. Yeah. When last year it was, if we don't get Connor Bedard, this whole thing is a failure. Yeah, the gap. The gap between Bedard and the field last year was far wider than Celebrini in the field this year. So I think that's that is is making everyone not, you know, get their pants in a bunch uh, over not being, you know, dead last right now. Yeah. yeah, and regardless of the implications, you've had a lot of dark days over there this season. So I would imagine that the past handful of days and how the team has played has been just tremendous, especially considering how much better Bedard looks right now than he did even like a few months ago. Yeah. He, you can tell he's, he's learning to play and finding open space and loading up and just that kid's going to be the fucking best. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He feels the same way. He started to look like the guy that we saw play in the WHL last year. And now he's doing it at the NHL level. Like he's got that, confidence in his game that assur assurance that he can get away with some of those things that he used to um because now he's he's learned the nhl game a little bit he's you know starting to you know widen his quote-unquote limitations in the league like it's 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 getting exciting so and, and hey wearing the bubble doesn't hurt either apparently where yeah rest i of your think career. there's magic in there yeah don't don't ever take it off but i have to say last night's game was the most fun I've had in the press box since CHGO launched two years ago. In the two years that we've been covering games in person, last night was the most fun. It felt like, you know, a playoff game in the building. It was, the, the energy was high. And then just the craziness was, of, the, yeah. of that third period with your, your almost goalie fight and just the insanity that happened. Damn, that was fun. And it's just like, man, Bedard's only scratching the surface. We have so many fun nights like this ahead of us, and a lot of them are actually going to mean something. Because in the grand scheme of things, last night didn't mean anything. Right. But we're going to have those fun Bedard moments in playoff games, and it's going to be incredible. Yeah, those officials are cops, by the way, for, for breaking up that goalie fight. <laughs> that was, that, Just they absolutely. Let it you should not never officiate a game in this league again if you're standing in the way of a goalie fight. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I mean, agree. If the rule is already in place that John Gibson's tossed out of the game for crossing the red line, at least let him get his money's worth. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I believe that that was like 75% of business decision by John Gibson based on the way that that game was going. He was like, I don't care if I fight or not. I'm crossing this line so I can I go to the showers there, early. Dagger, get me out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess we have to talk about Matt Rempe while he's still uh, around in the NHL. Uh, gets a four-game suspension. He's for, at fourteen fifty-nine uh, right now. Yeah, <laughs> for elbowing uh, Siegenthaler uh, the other night. Uh, we talked about this a little bit last time, and and one thing I was thinking about, and maybe since you guys do more of a national uh, angle than we do, I'm wondering, like, do you feel because we can see it, it's tangible. Like people are tuning in around the country to watch Connor Bedard, whether it's a TNT game or if it's a highlight on Instagram or whatever. It's getting a ton of reaction. Do you think there are people that are now that maybe weren't interested in hockey before that are now tuning in to Rangers games to see what Matt Rumpy does? Do you think that that's something that is appealing to people outside the game? 
I, I don't think like people are going out of their way, but I, I would bet that like a casual hockey fan or like a peripheral hockey fan, there's a better chance they know Matt Rempe's name than a lot of other players on the New York Rangers, just based off of how how many times he's found himself uh, like on highlights or in clips on Twitter or in headlines for the past couple of weeks. And that is either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on on how you want to look at it. But, I mean, he does move the needle, and, and the way that he started his career has been a circus and a sideshow, but it has drawn eyes and interest. That's kind of what I was thinking, and I'm – as a hockey fan and as someone that wants the game to be better and do better and have more eyes on it, I do find myself wondering, like, is he ultimately good for the game? And I don't personally like it. I think that's the whole thing is outdated and dumb, and we know what the injuries and fighting does to people mentally and physically. But I think in the short term, like, it is adding eyes to the sport, so I'm kind of I'm conflicted on how to feel about it. I'm not going to cheer for the guy, but it does seem like yeah. it is bringing some eyes in. Yeah, I mean, like the only thing is it it's not it's definitely not sustainable, both in the fact that he's fighting every single game, basically, and he's playing five minutes a night. And like both of those things are not sustainable. If he's gonna only gonna play five minutes a night, he's not gonna keep a roster spot in this league for very long. And if he's fighting every day, he's probably gonna do some damage to himself. And that's not great either. So the whole Matt Rempe thing, I think we we might be looking back on it in like a year being like, oh yeah, I forgot that was the whole thing. But And I also don't know if it would move the needle if he played anywhere other than New York because yeah, maybe. New York loves to worship mid, mid athletes, <laughs> mid to bad athletes at the peak of their powers. Like this is the Lynn sanity of the NHL right now. I was Although just Lynn, say, Jeremy yeah. Lynn was a serviceable basketball player. I don't know if I can say the same about Matt Rempe. That doesn't happen here at all. Never. No, no. We only we only like true superstars here in Chicago. Yeah. Like Tyson Bajant. Um well that's only one guy in this building. And I don't even think he, I don't even think he meant it. Um <laughs> Yeah, like the Rempy thing, you say it might bring bring in more eyes and, and you know, I just don't want like casual fans who want to see that expect that for every hockey game. Like we're at we're at a time where this game is as skilled and as fast as it's ever been. Literally, you know, we're in the middle of I think a golden era of hockey about how just good the game is. So if you get people that are like, well, how come the the giant guy isn't fighting in this game? I'm not gonna watch this right. kind of defeats the purpose. But I wouldn't think a team like the Rangers that has Stanley Cup aspirations Crazy. are like willing really to good. like waste the roster spot for four minutes in playing time and 17 minutes of penalties every night. They're gonna Brother, they're selling Matt Rempe jerseys in the pro shop. So yeah, I mean, this you're is right. a business decision more than anything because <laughs> you're, you're not selling fourth liner jerseys uh, in the pro shop for most other teams and most other players. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I, I mean, cash in it while you can. As I said, he's he's at fourteen minutes and fifty nine hey, seconds. So look no further. Get it I mean, while you can. honestly, in a difference, like Andrew Shaw is a guy that could play, but Andrew Shaw is a guy on a team with Taves and Kane and Hosa and Keith and Seabrook and Crawford, and you still saw a shit ton of Andrew Shaw jerseys around still Chicago. See you still see him. Yeah. So yeah, people next, love the folk hero. The next controversial thing that he does and puts himself in trouble. They, instead of suspending him, they should make the Rangers play him for like 18 to 20 minutes a night. <laughs> he, has to play, he has to play with Zabinajed and Panarin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, we sh that should be the next punishment. Yeah. Love that idea. That's good. In the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, also, I'm, so, I'm very... I think the thing that bothers me most about the Rempe thing is that People are acting like he's the first tall player to ever play in the NHL. <laughs> he, he drills a guy straight in the jaw with his elbow that's like parallel to his shoulder. And a lot of the responses are, well, he's tall. What else is he supposed to do? There are so many tall players that have played in the NHL. Zdeno Charo famously was 900 feet tall and played like 20 years in the NHL and very rarely did he, uh, did he make it a problem for anybody else. In, in an illegal way. Yeah. Eric right. Daze was 6'6 and never hit anybody. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is true. <laughs> you know? Oh, uh, well, we'll see. I'm, I am really, like, conflicted on the Rempe thing, and, and I, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it because as, as much as I feel like the hockey guy in me should be pushing against it, when those fights pop up on Instagram, I'm watching them, and I'm reading stories about them, and I'm 
I don't know. I'm just, I feel weird about it. I'm talking it out. I'm having some hockey therapy right now. That's what I'm doing. Well, it, I mean, if, a I'm, I'm a storyline guy. I'm, I'm like a, a talking points guy, especially when it comes to teams that I may not otherwise be interested in. I know the Rangers are pretty good, but if you're going to give me a storyline, you're going to give me like something juicy attached to a team. I'll take it. Like, I'm not saying that Matt Rempe is, uh, clearly, I think you can tell, like, I'm not the biggest Matt Rempe guy. I don't think that he's, uh, like, going to be around for a long time. But it's just an added thing that you can throw into the NHL mix. And as somebody who does an, uh, a daily NHL show Monday through Thursday, <laughs> it's been a great year for stuff to talk about. And he's just one of the storylines that's been interesting. Yeah, for sure. Well, the, good, the good news for you, Jay, you're conflicted. The league's going to make that decision for you one way or the other. You don't have, probably won't have to wait. That's true. Very long. That's true. Yeah. Uh, anything else coming up this week that you want us to uh, promote? Anything we should know about in the future? 24-hour stream tomorrow. <laughs> we are not doing another 24-hour stream. Uh, I don't know, we, have a, we may have a, a, a former player as a guest tomorrow. Uh, we haven't quite locked it down, but uh, we're just doing our, our thing. Grab ass, chit chat, hockey talk. All that good stuff. Oh, we hey, forgot to, look forward to that. We forgot to let you guys know Nick Felino is going to be in studio tomorrow. So if you want to book your flights to come and hang out, uh, do that quickly. The legend. The legend. Uh, also, please uh, please subscribe to us on YouTube if you're not already because we're trying to get those numbers up. We're, we're, uh, we're nearing the 5K mark, and we'd love to hit that benchmark. Nice. And by the way, we've not done a like spike yet. If you'd like to, could you do one for us? Uh, we'd oh, like absolutely. The, the pros to do Go it. Go on the like spike. Yes, the original. Love that. Uh, three, two, one, like spike. If you're in the chat and you're on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button right below the player. That's what a like spike is. Get those numbers up. You don't recognize the player, Pete? Well, I'm, I'm, I, can't, I can't see my eyesight's terrible. <laughs> that's Kellen Blackwell. I don't know. Oh, if, no, uh, yeah, I, I, that's, that explains that, too. <laughs> who is colin blackwell <laughs> exactly hey man we found a black hawk giving a thumbs up it's a rare graphic hey, that so. guy's got a hat trick this season yes he does he does recently yeah bedard doesn't yeah, yeah exactly. come on bedard oh, wait, step up. all right pete thanks man we appreciate your time as always and we'll catch up with you soon of course thanks for having me all right, all right that thanks, is pete, pete blackburn of the what chaos podcast yeah go check them out uh i also i say this every time but if you like what we do here you're gonna like what they do there mm-hmm it is hockey. It is fun. It is it's, lots of laughs. Yes. It's a good time. Go into a what cast episode uh, with an open mind. with an open mind, and don't like go in there thinking you're going to get thirty two thoughts. No, you're going right. to get the you information. Might get, like, you might get four. Or five. You might get one or two. You'll get yeah. you'll get the information that they give you there, but you get you're, you're, you're going to get uh, a whole lot of silliness. Yeah, but it's, it's good, it, and it's national hockey talk without being problematic or attached to problematic things. Sure. Which we appreciate. Yeah. Yes. It's good stuff. We really enjoy it. All right, we're going to make way for our friends at CHGO Cubs who are coming on at 3.30. Reminder, tomorrow mm-hmm. we have mm-hmm. Nick mm-hmm. Felino. He'll be here right at 2.30, right there on the left of Mario. Can't tell him apart. Hello. That's why we got to get the cry on going. Here's where he will be. To identify who's who. So he'll be here, we'll be here, you'll be here. 2.30 tomorrow, Nick Felino in studio on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. We all silly like the mayor. 